Just like before, we would like to find the least expensive shipping plan. So we are, again, minimizing cost. Now, we have total supply, 360, is equal to total demand, 360. So we know that the balance of flow in this system should be the inflow minus the outflow is equal to supply or demand, okay? Question, how many decision variables do we have in a transport problem, in the network problem? So how many decisions do we have? We need to count what? The arcs. The arcs. So the number of variables is equal to the number of arcs. So we have four arcs from one plus four arcs from two then three arcs from three and three arcs from four. Four and four, eight, plus six, fourteen. Now, we should name all of them. And so this is x one, three, x one, four, x one, five, and x one, six, right? x two, three, here, x24, x25, x26. In general, let's just say xij is equal to the amount transported from node i to node j. Now we need to minimize uh, the shipping plan or the cost associated with the shipping plan so it's still going to be similar to what we had before how many terms will have our objective function? As many terms as there are variables right? And the way to think about this is we have the cost and the amount transported. So this is the total cost of transporting this amount from 1 to 3. This is the total cost of transporting this amount, x14, from 1 to 4. Okay? So we just add the uh, independent parts. So it's 8, x13, 13, x14, great. 25, x15, 28, x16. So now uh, we need to account for some of the variables. Now the first thing that we know is that all xij is greater than or equal to zero. So the non-negativity constraints are important. Yeah? And then we have to think about constraints. So question, how many constraints do we have? Very good, Guy. We have as many constraints as the number of nodes. How many nodes do we have? Well, it's numbered, so uh, that's easy. So six constraints. How can we go about doing that? Look, we have some supply constraints, we have some demand constraints, and we have the transshipment node constraints. But more generally, we can just think about in minus out is equal to the supply or demand. All right, let's take this note, and what I'm going to do is breaking it down so that you can visualize the, the balance of flow rules, right? So I'm actually going to draw the node here, and I have supply is minus 160. I have node 1, and what's coming out of node? There are four things coming out of node 1, right? So it's... Um, So I'm going to say it's x13, and, and you can look at this as the row. This row here shows you all of the connections, uh, all of the arcs from 1. 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, and 1, 6. We apply the balance of flow rule. In minus out is equal to supply in this case. 
So what's coming in? Nothing is coming in. No arcs coming into one. So, and I'll write it here, in minus out is equal to supply. Zero coming in, minus what's coming out. Four different amounts, right? So x13 plus x14 plus x15 plus x16 has to be equal to supply minus 160 minus 160 equals to minus 160. So I'm going to do a little trick here. Zero goes away. I'm multiplying both sides by minus 1. So I get rid of the sign here and get rid of the parentheses there. Yes? I know. It saves a little bit of, of work. Okay, so we're done for node 1. Let's do the same thing for node 2. So we do the in minus out again, and it's x1, 4,